Now my refinishing project for today is a small chest of drawers. And the first phase of this project is to strip the drawers. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm using the flow over tank to do the, uh, the stripping process. So if you are unfamiliar with a flow over tank, basically what I like to call it, I like to refer to it as like um, glorified hand stripping. It, if the piece isn't emerged, it's not like a dip tank. Um, what, what, how it works is there's a, in, in the right hand corner, there's a five gallon pail of stripper and there's a hole in the tank and it's all tapered to one corner. So there's a circulating pump, which is a diaphragm pump. It circulates the stripper. It comes through this uh, tube and through the brush. You brush the stripper onto the piece um, and let it sort of soak a little bit. So the stripper will then run off of the piece um, back into the tank. It'll flow to the corner of the tank, back into the pail and then the pump will pump it back around again through the brush. So it's just a repetitive process. Now when I use the flow tank like this, uh, sometimes you have to scrub a lot in order to get the finish off. So you know, you'll see that in other videos, um, some of them, it just, you know, the finish literally just kind of falls off with the stripper. This was one of those cases. So I love it when that happens, All right? It's a lot less work for me. So you just, as I'm brushing it on, the finish is just uh, disintegrating and just comes right off with the stripper. So it makes it makes the job actually go just really quickly and a lot less effort involved. The beauty of a flow over tank is uh, how fast that you can you can accomplish this job. Now, what I'm doing after I spread the strip around and scrub the piece, I then use a squeegee. So I'm using a squeegee like you use for glass uh, or in your shower, and I just kind of run over the whole piece uh, and squeegee off as much of the stripper as I can. So it bears mentioning here though, that this same process can be done, the same job um, can be done with hand stripping. So I could easily just hand strip the face of these drawer fronts. And if I were gonna hand strip it, I wouldn't do inside the drawer. I would just tape it off, paper off the, the inside of the drawer and just then strip the face of the drawer front. Now I've moved the drawer fronts over to my other tank, the wash tank, and I'm now going to scrub them down with lacquer thinner. Now this tank I have set up the same as my stripping tank in that there's a, a diaphragm pump and the same hole on the one end and I'm just using lacquer thinner in place of stripper. Now the reason that I'm using the lacquer thinner wash here is to remove all of the old, uh, all of the stripper residue that was left behind, which you can you can see pretty clearly. Um, there's still quite a bit that remains on there, so this will wash it all off and give us a really nice, clean, final product that we'll be able to then sand. It'll make our sanding process a lot easier, so we'll have a lot less effort involved in sanding because we're gonna have a nice uh, a nice clean product to work with a nice base a nice starting point now if I were hand stripping this I would do the same process I just wouldn't be using 
you know, the flow-over tank with the brush, I, when I do hand stripping, um, we still strip it um, by hand, and then we go over it with lacquer thinner, but instead of using the brush and the flow tank, I would be using just my lacquer thinner would be, you know, in a container, and then I would use a Scotch-Brite pad um, in place of the brush and the flow tank, but exact same process. Now where I use uh, lacquer thinner, uh, there are quite a few people that also use acetone um, in place of the lacquer thinner. So that's another product that you can use um, instead of lacquer thinner, it works very well. Uh, it just evaporates a lot faster than the lacquer thinner does. Um, uh, another reason that we use the lacquer thinner, besides just giving us a good clean foundation in order to start our sanding and finishing, uh, it also helps remove any wax residue. See there's wax in stripper and the wax is in the stripper um, for evaporation process purposes. Stripper evaporates very quickly. So they put wax in the stripper in order to slow down that evaporation process. So the stripper stays wet longer and therefore can work better. So I'm just cleaning the piece off with a dry absorbent cloth and I'm going to try and get all the lacquer thinner off now and just you know dry it off real good and clean it off and make sure that it's uh, the you know the piece is as clean as it can possibly be. You know the, I, I always feel like the, the better job I do uh, when I'm stripping and cleaning the better end product I'm going to have and the easier my job's going to be so it's worth putting a little bit of extra effort into this stage. I'm going to benefit from that the whole rest of the refinishing project. So look, that's, I got stripper right at the end of my glove. That's not dirt. That's a chemical burn. That's how nasty that stuff is. A stripper burns. You don't want to get it on your skin. So I guess this will be a good time to talk safety gear. So safety gear is quite important when you're stripping. Uh, I'm going. I'm using. I got stripper on my arm uh, from I from me taking my gloves off because I was filming and moving the the camera. So you know, one of my gloves that I used to pull the other glove off had stripper on it, and I and I got a little bit on the end of the glove, which then got on my arm. The stripper can be, you know pretty brutal uh, when it gets on your skin, it burns a lot. So I'm using methylene chloride based stripper. It is still available, you have to buy it commercially. Um, it's just not available at like uh, your hardware stores, okay? Uh, but methylene chloride based stripper is still available. Regardless of what type of stripper you use, uh, you need to wear proper protective gear. So that safety gear will include, but might, might not just be limited to, a good respirator. Um, you don't want to be breathing these 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 fumes in. Uh, they're very uh, they're very bad for your health. So we want to wear a good quality respirator. Um, I'm also wearing safety glasses because, especially in an environment like a strip tank or a flow tank, because the strippers sloshes around a lot um, and it will get in your eyes and when it does it is a miserable experience so you, you always got to wear safety glasses um, in this type of uh, situation I'm also wearing a good quality gloves because I could try not to get it on my on my hands and my arms but apparently I'm not all that good at that um, and also uh, I'm, you, you can see I'm wearing a full suit um, because I kind of like to manhandle this stuff and I'm like I you know I had to pick this this chest up and put it in there and I want to give it a good old bear hug so you know I wear I wear that suit so that I don't get any of my clothes because it gets in your clothes it absorbs into there and uh, that's like having like a sponge you know so you I, I wear that uh, typically whenever I'm using the flow tank and if I'm doing hand stripping I do not wear it it's not necessary But in the flow tank, 
I'm always wearing my uh, my blue uh, Smurf suit. So I'm just going to now do that same lacquer thinner wash on the case and this will pretty much finish up my stripping uh, project here on this chest of drawers and we'll be able to we'll be ready to go on to the uh, to part two to the next phase which will be sanding. So now on these on these cases when you use the the uh, flow tank it's, it's a little bit messy on cases and I won't always strip a case in a flow tank. Uh, there will be times and you'll see projects on our on our website where we will do a piece like this and I might just hand strip it. Um, because everything, the, the stripper and the lacquer thinner and all, it gets inside the case. So, I mean, you have to clean everything. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's just a pain if it's a really big piece and I work by myself. It's, I, I might not be able to carry it and get it up in the tank and stuff like that. So if it's a really large, heavy, chest of drawers or something, I probably wouldn't use the strip tank. I probably would just hand strip it. But in this case, it's a small enough piece, easy enough to maneuver. So I'll just go ahead and strip it in here and uh, it's not too difficult for me. So I'm just gonna do the same process on the case here as I did in the drawers. Just make sure I clean everything off. I'm gonna wipe it all off good. You know, I'm gonna do the back and the underside just to make sure I get all that stripper residue off. Now in this case, I'm gonna throw the piece back over into my stripping tank um, because I'm gonna to have to roll it around a little bit in order to be able to wipe it all off. And my, my flow tank, or my wash tank I should say, um, is a little bit too small uh, for a chest of drawers like this so I'm using the squeegee and I'm just making sure the the bottom is clean and doesn't have any stripper on it um, so I'm putting it all down to the corner there um, so that when I roll this around I'm not getting stripper back on it again which has that wax in it if you remember I told you I want to get all the wax off well I don't want to get any more wax on so we're gonna now just wipe it down really nicely and dry it off like we did with the drawers and once I'm done with that I'll set this aside probably let it dry for um, you know overnight and the next day we'll be able to sand it and get started with the next phase of this finishing project. Now the next phase of this will be sanding and then I'll get into the staining and coloring and finishing. So hey if you like videos like that and you want to see that next video coming up make sure you subscribe and hit that notification button so that you get notified when we upload that video. So I'm Rod Kaiser. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hey, leave us a comment below. Let us know what you thought about this video. You know, tell us a little bit about yourself. We'd love to hear where you're from and maybe any thoughts that you have for future videos that we might want to do. So we really appreciate you watching. Subscribe to our channel, like this video, and thanks a lot. We'll see you in the next one.